Okay, so finally, long last, we've been waiting a few years, Suzuki has bought out a new GSXR 1000. The old bike was not rubbish. The old bike was a great bike and a lot of people loved it, but it's fair to say things have moved on, you know, with the current crop of Japanese sports bikes and the European guys coming in too. The old GSXR was getting a little bit left behind in terms of outright performance, particularly on track. And Suzuki made it clear from the start with, with this new model, they're going for the jugular. They're not going out for the, the practical sports bike, the all round bike. They are going for the best 1000cc sports bike. And that's a hell of a bold claim, especially when you know, you're not, you're not a small update, this is an all new bike. There's hardly a component, of, I think the engineer said the foot pegs are the same, so big claim. What have they done? 202 horsepower and then 200 kilos. If you get the ABS version, it's 203 kilos, so the numbers add up and the numbers are all there. Technical changes, one of the biggest surprises I think a few people expected electronic suspension on this bike. The engineers tested it and they said, no, it's better with the new Showa balance-free suspension, they call it, which is, looks like a gas fork off of a superbike. In terms of the engine, we've got a seamless quick shifter up and down the box, so no, no clutch at all, just hold the throttle open, up the quick shifter, brake, back down the box. We've got race ABS, traction control, we've got a really, really, really effective slipper clutch. You know, if there's a list of things that you want on a, on a superbike, they're on it, they haven't really missed anything at all. The LCD screen on this bike has got all the information that you'd expect. It's got lap times, it's got a rev hold counter on it, it's got a shift light. Same as all bikes, these days. there's so much stuff on them. We could, we could waste hours talking through all of it. But the most important thing that the GSXR is back. It's hard, fast, and it's out for the crown. And we're gonna take it out to Phillip Island now, put a few laps in, see how she goes. our second session now on the GSX-R and easy is probably the best word. I mean, Phillip Island, I've never been here before. What a challenge in track. Ups, downs, blind corners, so fast. But with this bike, you can just get going straight away. You're not, you're not thinking about, oh, when's the power gonna come in or you know, how's it gonna behave on the brakes? Just everything so far has been easy, stable, predictable, and the power is incredible. But again, there's no leap, there's no sudden surge. Everything's just really linear. So yeah, nothing but praise for it, for it so far and uh, a few more sessions this afternoon on some stickier tyres so we'll be able to push the chassis a bit harder and do some more skids. Warm enough here, it's a bit hotter than Wales, definitely uh, struggling with the heat a bit now. I'm just going to run through a few of the technical items on the, on the new GSX R1000, a few of the kind of big changes they've made, a few of the highlights. I mentioned already the, the forks, you know, they've, they've, they've stepped away from the electronic suspension. Brakes were a bit of a, a criticism on earlier GSXRs, a few changes to the setup, different, different discs, larger discs, 10mm bigger disc on it. No problems at all with the brakes, it's 4 million degrees outside and we're pushing hard and riding hard and there's a lot of hard braking here and not a single issue so far so I'm pleased to say the brakes are absolutely spot on. A few of the kind of major structural changes to this bike, firstly the engine, they've tilted the cylinders back six degrees, effectively shortening the engine. It's now further forwards, closer to the front wheel, so they've moved the swing arm pivot closer as well, 20 mil closer to the front wheel. The wheelbase has grown by 15 mil, 1405 to 1420 now, but but the, the engine and the body weight is much further forward on the bike, improving front end feel. Narrower and shorter as well. The engine's 
five, six and a half mil narrower than the old one. The frame's lighter, the tank's narrower, the fairing's narrower, the tank's lower. The whole bike has been made much more compact and, and sleek. Usually when you hear that, you expect the next line to be, there's no wind protection, it's horrible to ride. But they've done a lot of wind tunnel tests and they, they were emphasising that a lot in the presentation. Nice and easy to tuck behind the screen. Okay, the, uh, the exhaust system. Yeah, I think the end can's already had a bit of a flaming by the experts of the internet. It is a big end can, but... There's a Yoshimura one for sale aftermarket and that looks fantastic and that's what most of us will do anyway. May not look it by my uh, sweaty red-faced appearance, but best thing about this new GSX R1000, easy to ride. The harder you push, it just wants to go with you. We've just done kind of our last session of the day. The GSX-R just took everything I could throw at it. I've outbraked myself countless times, ran wide in turns, squeeze a bit more brake in, put it in on its side, and the thing just, just sucks up everything you throw at it. It looks like a GSX-R, it feels like a GSX-R, but it's lighter, it's faster, and it's more sophisticated than ever before. It's gonna be really interesting getting this back, back in the UK, back on track and test it against its competitors. But at the moment, Suzuki's aim is to, to outdo every other 1000cc sports bike. I'm not gonna to commit to saying yes or no, but it's pretty damn close.